Hello and welcome to AR on AR. I'm Adam Rose and today I'm going to be talking about how to calculate distance when you are racing. Quick shout out to Bend Racing. Thanks very much for continuing to support the channel. And for those of you who want to get some training in adventure racing, it would be a good idea to contact them, whether you live in the US or outside. Okay, so just quickly, the way we calculate distance is either by counting how much time we've taken from A to B, because that's a useful way of working things out, or when it comes to trekking stages, counting how many paces we've taken to cover a certain amount of distance. And with those two tools, it'll make your navigation that much easier to calculate. Okay, so let's talk about the timing first. Whether you're on a kayak or a bike or trekking or some other discipline, it is really useful to be able to work out how much distance you've covered based on the time. It's not enough simply to be able to take a compass bearing and terrain recognition to be able to work that out because, for example, if you're traveling through a deep forest or traveling across a desert or traveling across a vast lake bed, I remember in a race, uh, I think it was one of the XPDs down in Australia, um, it was in South Australia and the team members had to cover a dry white, you know, like the other side of the moon really. And so it is really critical that you're able to take bearings and travel accurately to get to the water point in the middle of, you know, 30, 40 kilometers of whiteout and uh, complete barrenness. So you'd want to know if you had gone far enough to reach a checkpoint or if you still had some distance to go. It wasn't sufficient that you took a map bearing. Um, or what if you had been slightly off with your map bearing and you had, or compass bearing and had gone past that water checkpoint. I mean, it really could have been a very, very serious consequence. So you work out timings before the race. And in brief, what you need to do is work out how much time it takes you, if it's a trekking stage, for example, how much time it takes you to cover a certain number of kilometers. Most people have an average trekking speed of four to five kilometers an hour. So that's anywhere between 12 minutes to uh, 15 minutes to cover one kilometer over flat, easy going terrain. So if I know that, and uh, let's just say five kilometers an hour, and we've got 30 kilometers to cover, 30 divided by five should take us roughly six hours. Now that's on a specific terrain like that, but what if the terrain's really hilly? What if the terrain is mountainous? What if it's very uh, rough going, you know, there's, there's deep thickets and not much of a trail? Again, that's gonna slow us down a lot. So you need to work out as a team what your average timing is over different types of terrain, not simply the easy going flat stuff. And also comp uh, compensate for traveling at night because on average, uh, people tend to travel about half the speed during the night that they do during the day. And what if you're really tired? That's going to slow you down even more. So in your training, through training in various kinds of conditions, training at night, tra uh, training in headwind, training in the worst conditions, actually, is, is uh, the better, <laughs> really, as, as an educational experience. Um, if you're armed with all that information, then when you get to the race, you look at the map and you finally know what the route is and you know the kind of terrain that you're going to be going over. You can say, well, based on our prior knowledge, it should take us this number of hours to complete that stage. And that's really, really, really important because how long it's going to take me to do a stage is going to affect how much food I carry because you're consuming, obviously, a certain amount of food per hour. You're going to have to plan accordingly. And to uh, make life easy, what you can also do is buy things like this. Either make them or buy them. This is a timings card um, from a company called Shave and Raspberry. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. But just as an example, this is a little kind of quick reference guide. And it gives you a, a breakdown of you know, how long it would take you to cover, for example, a kilometer. If you're traveling at 5K an hour, 4K an hour, 3K, 2K an hour. Um, and then also on the back here, it says how, how much that particular timing uh, would be affected by traveling at night or traveling with a heavy load or traveling uh, into headwind um, in deep snow, in soft snow, etc. So you would add all those factors together to affect the timings that are on this side of the card. Good idea to make this kind of thing, put it in your map case or whatever, um, just so certainly in the planning of your uh, route, 
you can say, well, looking at this, it's really steep ground. So normally 5K an hour, we probably, and it's gonna be nighttime when we do it, it's probably gonna drop down to one to 2K an hour in those conditions and we're really tired. Okay, so timings are really effective as a way of determining how much ground you've covered. Same with a bicycle. I mean, I'm sure when you're training on a bike, you know, you've got a certain speed and an ideal speed. Um, and when it comes to kayaking, um, it's probably the most effective way of uh, determining how much uh, water you've covered is time. So timing is critical. And you should ideally give the task to a different member of the team, not the navigator. The navigator focuses on the compass. Somebody else focuses on the time. Now, another way to work out how much distance you've covered is to count your paces. On a bicycle, you're allowed to use a bike computer, but um, when it comes to foot stages, you're not allowed to use any sort of electronic tool, so you can't use a pedometer, you know, like built into your GPS device or onto your phone even, it will calculate how many steps you've taken, you know, your 10,000 steps a day. Um, so you've got to calculate it manually, either in your head or with some tool to aid you that's a manual tool. Some people even use those kind of little counters when you know you go to some sort of football match or something and, and the crowd's filing into the stadium and somebody's sitting there with a clicker and every time somebody walks through the turnstile they're clicking to work out how many people have entered this, the, the football ground. So use one of those things or in my case I have this thing attached to my uh, compass, a little lanyard and these are called ranger beads or pacing beads and in essence it's like an abacus. So I use these nine beads over here to calculate pacing and these ones to calculate kilometers. Now again, it requires homework before you do a race. So based on your particular height and your particular stride length, what you need to do is work out how many paces it takes you to cover a set distance. And I'm just gonna use 100 meters because it's a really simple thing. So if you go to a, a, a running track near your house, find the 100 meter sprint, work out how many steps it takes you to walk uh, the length 100 meters. In my case, on average, on flat easy ground, it's about 65 paces with one leg, meaning I'm only counting on my right leg or I'm only counting on my left leg. I'm not counting both, why? Because that's just gonna double the number of paces and I'd rather work with 65 paces than 130 paces. So, the way the, the Ranger Beats work, I have everything set to zero at the moment. In my head, this is zero, right? So if I do my first 65 paces, um, after I've done that, that's 100 meters, I move one bead uh, to the end. Then I start counting from naught again. One, two, three, four, five, up to 65, I've done another 100 meters. So I keep on doing that. Every 100 meters, which is 65, 65 paces, I move one of these across. So eventually, I'll move all nine across, that's 900 meters, and then I count another 65 paces, which makes a total of a kilometer. I can finally move that one. Okay, then I reset these ones again. And I start again for the second kilometer. First 65 paces, I move one across. Second, third, all those 100 meters. I get all the way there, that's 900 meters. So it's one kilometer and 900 meters. I count another 65 paces, two kilometers done. Reset that. And it's not actually that hard to make something like this. You know, a bit of cord, get some beads. As long as the beads don't move too easily because you don't want it to accidentally slide down this thing, just put a number of knots. You can see here I've got one, two, three knots. Um, that's all you need. Really, really useful. And, you know, I'm not using this all the time. You know, an easy navigational terrain, then, you, you know, trekking through uh, easy paths and all that kind of stuff, you're not going to bother. But when the navigation gets critical, for example, I'm at night, it's dark, uh, or it's misty conditions, something like that, on a mountain top, and it's really critical that I don't fall off the edge of the mountain, um, I might use these beads as a way of checking, you know, just how much uh, ground have we covered. It's really easy to, to, to miss that. For example, if the checkpoint, you know, is certain bearing, the navigator will be focusing on the bearing, I'll be focusing, in this case, on the distance covered. And with the two of us focusing on these different aspects of navigation, it should make it much easier to find the checkpoint rather than relying completely on the navigator. Just also to remember that that 65 paces I'm talking about that works for me based on my height, my, my stride length, is for flat, easy ground. But I've also got to work out how many paces it'll take me if I'm going uphill, because normally people take more steps to go up a hill because they're shorter steps. And going down a hill, you're going to take bigger steps because you're working with gravity. So you should work out, just like with the timings, you work out timings for different terrain conditions. You should work out pacing for different terrain conditions. So at the drop of a hat, you should be able to say, well, looking at the map, let's say a riverbed with lots of boulders, instead of 65 paces, for me, 
maybe take 130 paces to do the same amount of 100 meters. So you should, in your little storehouse in your memory there, be able to work with varying terrain types and knowing how to adjust your pace count accordingly. So lots of homework you've got to do, but it becomes second nature. So it's just like everything else. Practice, practice, practice. It'll easily be able to work out how many paces you should be taking to cover a certain amount of ground. Okay, hopefully that was useful. Just like everything else, uh, more episodes coming and uh, more stuff on navigation. There's always more to add to the mix, but um, practice this stuff. Um, it will make your navigation easier. All right, thanks very much. Cheers.